Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you for joining me. Yesterday, we began a study of Jesus and what we're calling Jesus and the Deuteronomy 15, chapter 15 project. Because Jesus, responding to a, some critics, quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 15. Let me set the story again up for you. It, it is the last days of Jesus's life. In 48 hours, he's going to be crucified. And he's at a party in Bethany. Bethany is the city of Lazarus. Remember, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And at this dinner party, which is at Simon the leper's house, or Simon who was formerly a leper, apparently Jesus has healed Simon or cleansed Simon of his leprosy, the power of Jesus. And they're at this dinner party, celebrating Lazarus whom Jesus raised from the dead. So you have Lazarus there, he's the guest of honors at Simon the leper's house. Lazarus's two sisters, Mary and Martha are there as well. Somehow Mary got so overwhelmed with gratitude for what Jesus had done in raising her dead brother back to life. that she goes and gets the most precious, costly uh, item that she personally owned which was a vase of very exquisite and precious perfume imported from uh, India, made of pure nard. And she breaks it and she pours it on Jesus's head as an expression of love. Now this was expensive perfume. We are told that it was worth a year's wages, 300 denarii and most workers only made a denarii a day. So this was like the equivalent of a year's wages, wage. Well, once it was poured on Jesus's head, we are told that some of the disciples began to complain. It was one in particular who began to complain. In fact, Mark chapter 14 says to us, uh, beginning, I think I'm wrong, verse um, four, some of at the table were indignant why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. Stop here. Now, we know who it was the guy who was the chairman of the criticism committee. And because the same story is told in the Gospel of John, but John gives us a detail that Mark omits. And in John chapter 12, verse 4 and 5, this is what we read. We read, but Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, that perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money, stop here, given to the poor. And when Judas starts the criticism, it's first started as a solo criticism on the part of Judas that escalated into a chorus because the other disciples started joining in, berating Mary for pouring and showing affection towards Jesus. And he said, and Judas said, uh, it could have been given to the poor. Go back to Mark's gospel and notice what Jesus' response is. Mark chapter 14, I think, look at verse five. Let's start with verse five. No, thank you, verse seven. This is Jesus' response to Judas saying uh, that we could have given, sold it and given the money to the poor. He says, you will always have the poor among you. No, and you, will, and you can help them whenever you want to but you will not always have me here, which is Jesus' way of saying in 48 hours, I will be dead. So if you're gonna do something for me, you need to do it now because I won't be around. That's what Jesus was saying. But I wanna respond very quickly to what Judas said. We could have sold the perfume and given the money to the poor, the poor. And God believes the Christians should help the poor. But there are two ways that we can help the poor. One is through charity and one is through justice. So let me explain the difference between charity and justice. Because we do a lot of charity work, but if we would do justice work, we might have to do charity. This is what charity is. Charity is providing aid to help the poor. Let's say if I see someone homeless and I give them something to eat. That, that's, that's charity work. But justice is eradicating the policies that make them poor um, in the first place. You see, for example, here's, here's, the, here's the difference between, between justice and charity, okay? Let's say, for example, 
uh, a bridge is out and uh, there's a big cliff. And if you don't warn people that the bridge is out and they keep driving, they'll fall down a cliff to their death. Here's the options. You can put an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff to help those people who fell off the cliff. Who, Okay, that's, that's mercy, that's charity. You're helping somebody because they're hurting. But what about putting a sign up at the top of the cliff or a barrier up at the top of the cliff saying, cliff, bridge out, because if you put the sign up or barriers up saying bridge out, that's justice. You won't need to do charity. In other words, helping people at the bottom of the cliff. And if we would have policies that give people opportunities for education, for employment, that's justice. Then if they have employment, like for example, or having um, uh, a jobs bill that pays a living wage could eliminate a lot of poverty letting people go to college free, making sure that there are good schools in every neighborhood. That is justice work. And justice work gets to the root causes and charity deals with the symptoms. Now, when Julie said we could have sold the money and given it to the poor, which one of the two types of service to the poor do you think Judas was talking about? Do you think he was talking about justice? No, he's talking about charity. He's talking about selling the 300, um, the, 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 the perfume, getting the three, the three, the year's wages and just dispensing the poor instead of eliminating poverty so that you won't have to help the poor. He was talking about doing charity work. And we are later told in the Gospel of John that it had nothing to do with helping the poor. It said that Judas was the treasurer and he was stealing money. And so he, he was taking money and putting in his pocket. Listen, when you see, especially when it comes to the black community, our poverty is because of the lack of justice, the lack of justice. Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was the president of the United States in the 60s after Kennedy was assassinated, gave a speech at Howard University at the commencement in June of 1965. And this is what Lyndon Baines Johnson said. Negro poverty is solely the, and simply the consequences of ancient brutality, past injustices and present day prejudices. So the reason we have poor black neighbors, what he is saying is because of ancient brutalities, slavery, past injustices, Jim Crow and Jane Crow, redlining, and present day prejudices with his implicit biases. That's why we have it. Listen, Christians are supposed to help the poor. But the best way we can help the poor is work to dismantle the systems that cause poverty in the first place. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, um, help us to do charitable acts, but more importantly, help us to do justice. Help us to put a barrier and a sign at the top of the cliff saying bridge out and not simply put ambulances at the bottom of the cliff to help those who have fallen there. Let justice roll in like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me today with another powerful point to ponder. Look, everybody needs a church home. If you don't have one, I'd like to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us here, newstart at ssclive.org. That's newstart at ssclive.org. Well, I hope you're having a blessed day, and uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. But until then, don't forget, during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, uh, don't, well, I was going to say stay home. No, don't stay home. But just remember, God is still in control. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.